Hey everyone, Eric from Super Data Brothers here. Today I'm gonna to show you how to quickly and easily generate demo data using a free tool called Makaroo. Let's get started. All right, so Makaroo is a website that lets you generate data for free. Uh, that's right up here, makaroo.com. Just go to makaroo.com and you'll get to it. So what it does is lets you use this drag and drop builder to create fields in order to generate uh, artificial or fake data in a variety of different formats. So you can use CSV, JSON, a whole bunch. Most of the time I'd say you'd probably be using Excel or CSV. So this is the landing page. I'm not signed in yet. And just being on the landing page will let you use this builder here. But what it won't do is let you save this, what you've built here into what we call a schema. It won't let you save that into a schema and it won't let you see those schemas later. So I, I definitely suggest that we need to log in first. So if you go up here, you can see the sign in right here. So if you want to create an account, go to sign in and then go to don't have an account, sign up for free. And then I'm about to create a new account right here. So the video is going to cut and then I'll see you afterwards. All right. So I just created my account pretty easy. It doesn't even have you confirm your email address or anything like that. You just sign up and it kicks it back to this main page. So a few things I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna take a look up here. You see there's the light and dark toggle. I know some of you don't like this, but I prefer light mode. So I'm gonna do the rest of this video in light mode, but you can obviously choose what you want. I'm also going to zoom in a bit here so it's easier for everyone to see. And that's uh, control, hold control and scroll on the mouse wheel to zoom into web pages in case anyone didn't know. So this is still the, the default page right here. So what we're gonna do so we can save it is go up to schemas going to create a schema and here is the new schema we're working with. So by default, it gives you all these basic things, ID, first name, last name, etc. And you can drag and drop these. And then well, we have the field name, which is the name of the field, obviously. And then we have what the type is, which is what kind of data is going to be populated in that field. And if you click right here, you get a whole bunch of different default options. And I'll, I'll go over some of the, the good ones uh, that you're going to be using a lot later. And then over here, you have options. So based on the type you select, you get different options. So the one that everyone ha has is blank percent. So if you want a field to be blank, you can just do 50%. It'll be blank half the time. And then here you can also do custom calculations using Ruby. And I'll go through a few examples of that too. So let's get out of here. So if you notice down here, you we have this floating bar right here, which is the... Um, bar that lets you download your data or preview. So let's say you've made a bunch of changes, you have things how you want them, and you just want to check it, you can go to preview right here, and it'll quickly generate all of that information. So that's pretty nice. And then once you're ready to use it, you can download the data. So on the free version, there is a limitation, you can only do 10,000 rows, but I believe the paid version, you can get up to 100,000 rows, and it's only 50 bucks a year. So if you need a whole bunch of data, then that might be worth it for you. But honestly, the free version for almost all use cases, is going to cut it for you. So, and then here you also have the different options. You can choose CSV, JSON, and then most of the time Excel, CSV. So let's go for Excel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a, a few examples of the different types of calculations and the different uh, types of fields you can create. And how I'm going to do that is by going through an example with you and going line by line, field by field, and showing you all the different custom calculations I'm going to, uh, to that I'm going to create for it. So. The scheme we're going to do is called Open Job Posting Report, and this uh, artificial data will be for a report that I'm making to demo to other people. So it'll have information about uh, job postings, people who've applied, and all that sort of thing. So let's just get started. I'm going to start showing you how to do it. So first off, ID. Let's keep that pretty basic. Also, let's change this back to zero. Every single data set, you should probably leave this ID field. because so That's pretty important. Um, and then next, let's look, let's see, we're creating a job posting. So what type of position is position type? All right. The type we want it to be, let's look at this custom list. Custom list is one of the most important ones you're going to end up working with. So in this custom list, let's see what type of position is this going to be? I'm just going to copy and paste these in so you don't have to watch me type this entire thing. So full-time and part-time. And then in here, we have the different options. You have random, custom, and sequential. We're just going to keep this at random, right? 
We're going to keep this at zero and we're not gonna put any custom calculations on this. So we have a few more we're creating. So let me create those. Position status. Let's make this a custom list as well. See, position the status, it can be vacant. There can be an offer, it can be filled or it can be canceled. That's also um, for here. Instead of leaving this random, so you have these different options, random, choose values randomly, custom, create a custom distribution, sequential, so basically just would go in order each line, vacant, offer, filled, canceled, vacant, offered, filled, canceled. Or Cartesian, which frankly I have no idea what it does. So if someone's really interested in knowing what that does, I can look into it and maybe make another video. But for this one, we wanna do custom, right? So we're gonna to go to custom. And then you notice once you do custom, you get this right here this button right here, this little chart. And if you click on that, it actually lets you set a custom distribu distribution there. So we can set, for example, uh, and you, in this custom distribution, you can set the different rates that things happen. So if you want vacant to be pretty common, you can do three on vacant, two, three on filled, and then canceled is one. And that's and this basically, the higher the number, that's how often it's going to show up. So. All right, we did that, let's just hit apply. All right, so we've got that applied. So let's just see what we have so far. So let's just preview the data and make sure it's all working. Let's see, position type, full type, offer, filled, 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 vacant, filled, 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 right? And so if you look in here, canceled was the least common, so it should be the least common in this data set. So there we go. Looks like that's working. So let's close that. Let's create another field. And you'll notice when you create a new field, it basically copies the one above it. So this next field will be the, the department. And then let's see the different departments. Keep that as a custom list. And then we'll keep this basic. Let's create another one. Job title. And then, like I said in here, there is a ton of stuff you can pick from. So instead of custom list, let's do job title. So there we go. So that'll just automatically generate a job title for us. So preview, see department, HR, there we go. Job title, recruiting manager, all these different job titles. All right, let's close that. Let's add another field. Let's say we want salary. Salary, let's see, is there salary in here? No. So what we can do is we can either do a number right? And then we could set min and max and all that sort of thing. Or since uh, let's say that this company just has different salary tiers, we can do a custom list. Let's create that custom list. And then let's say we want it to be, say this is a very high, high quality company. So we want to pay for high quality resources, 100,000, um, 120,000, 130,000 and 140,000. There we go. Let's do that and let's say, let's, let's say 140,000, that's the CEO. So let's change the ratio. So that's pretty uncommon. Let's have, I don't know, five, four, three, and then one. That'll change the ratio of that. All right, let's apply that. Oh, one more thing. You could, if you wanted to, I'll just, I guess I'll just show you. So you can add multiple rules, right? And you can type what you have here. And, but there's also this add rules for all values of. So let's see position type of, let's see a position type, right? What do we got here? So that'll make it so, here we go. If the field position type equals full time, or equals part-time. So let's say we want full-time to be more common. We can do, um, I mean, we want full-time to have a higher salary generally. So we can do, right? So this is more common, then it goes like, then it goes down. And then we want the lower for the part-time, the salary is gonna be lower, right? So there we go. So let's apply that. Let's preview that. And we'll see full-time, higher salary, part-time, High salary, but if you, you we should notice a trend that full time generally has a higher salary. If you look here, 14, 12, full time, part time's lower. That seems to bear out, so it looks like it's working. All right, let's add another field. 
the date it was posted. So here we have date time. And then let's say, let's just leave this all default. We don't need to change that. Let's add another field. So let's do candidate first name right there. Candidate first name. Let's make this a first name. Candidate class. Let me just change that so that also is spelled out. First name. Let's change this to last name. Let's add some more fields. All right. Let's do candidate email. Email. Let's do gender. Gender. So you have a different options here. Uh, the default gender will give you a whole bunch of options. Let's just choose the default gender. And then we get, if you look over here, gender is non by, by gender. It gives you, I think it looks like the entire, whatever, the Facebook list of, of gender options, it goes by that. So all this other stuff. And then, oops, wrong, misclick. You have the different options. So let's go for, you know, gender binary. A lot of companies might go for that more traditionally, especially if it's a, an older organization. Gender, male, female. Let's just keep that, that like that for simplicity's sake. And then we also have hired date. We want that to be a date. Have that be a date time. And then we can leave that all the same. So we just create all, all of this, um, all of these fields now. So let's do a preview and see if it has everything we want. All right, so let's look here. ID, position, all this. Position canceled, vacant, let's see, offer. So we'll notice here, it's if it says vacant, like it says vacant, but if we notice it has some stuff like the position's vacant, but it still has a hired date. Well, that doesn't make sense. We're gonna wanna clean that up. So I'm gonna show you how to do that using the, uh, the custom formula option that we have right here. So let's see, hired date, let's go over here. All right, so here we see, this uses the Makaru formula syntax, which is just Ruby. I don't know Ruby, but you know it's, it's pretty basic. So you can kind of just build this fairly easily with it customly. Um, so let's just, let's just take this and then we can modify it for our purposes. So if this, equals January then cold, so we don't want that. So if, so instead of, so this will basically is saying if this field, but we wanna, we don't wanna check against this field, we wanna check against whether or not it's vacant or not, right? So let's do if field, oops, it's field, and then we go here, and we type in, um, I think it was called position status. There we go, if that equals vacant, then let's just have this be empty, right? And then let's just do else this, and then end. So what this is saying, if the position status field in any given uh, row that's being generated, if the position status field has is vacant, then just have it be um, a blank field. So let's Apply that and see if that works. All right, didn't give us an error. So, vacant, vacant, vacant. Higher date is vacant. There we go. So that's working properly. Cool. Notice that when we created the calculation, the this little calculation symbol here is now showing up teal, showing that there's a, an active calculation in there compared to this these white ones, which don't have any active calculations. So that's that's basically how it works. Once you have this created, you can go ahead and save this schema, open job posting report, save right there. Schema saved. And now when we go back to the main page, let's go back to schemas. 
we can see here's the open job postings report. We can click on that and then we can modify it and use it in the future. You know, when you want to download the data, you can download the data here and it will download that 10,000 rows. If you try to do more than that, it would give you an error. But right now it's generating and downloading the data. All right, there we go. Open with Excel. Here we go. There we go, there it is. So here's, then we can upload this to Power BI or any other tool you need to use and start using it. So there's a bunch of other options in Makaru. Like you can save, you can choose to like save this to a data set, which is just like you can refer, it'll save that data and you can reference that data in different schemas you create. Probably won't be needing that. You can create mock APIs and reference that those APIs in your code. You can do scenarios, which I'm not exactly sure what scenarios or projects do. I think they're new features since I started using. But basically just schemas is gonna do it for you. And you know, 10,000 rows, that's plenty. And then if you need more than 10,000 rows, you can pay for silver for 50 bucks a year. And, and I've done that in the past when generating um, JSON, a huge bunch of JSON for a um, demo MongoDB database we were creating. So up to 10,000 rows, so that's pretty good. So yeah, that's, uh, that's my overview of Makaru. I hope it was pretty useful for you. Um, again, just go to makaru.com. It's totally free. You can sign up. You don't even need to create, uh, really create an uh, account with a real email. You can use a fake email if you really wanted. But um, yeah, so that's my overview. Thank you for watching. Um, if you have any suggestions or you saw something I did that wasn't very smart or you know, you want a different video, more on Makaru, more on Power BI or Cognos, go ahead and let us know. Like, comment, subscribe, all that basic stuff. Thank you and have a nice day.